With so many shakeups across the industry, Netflix's mass layoffs, Disney's CEO swap, and Warner Bros. Discovery's messy merger, it's easy to assume that the subscription video on demand model is on the outs. But while it's true that a good number of major players are rethinking their strategies and how they frame success to their investors, streaming has continued to break records in 2022. Nielsen reports that viewers opted for streaming options more often than both broadcast and cable combined for the first time in history, and it did it two months in a row, largely due to the fact that this year was positively packed with streaming titles. While we're happy to leave duds like The Terminalist, The Book of Boba Fett, and Blockbuster in the dust, 2022 brought us so many gems. High Fantasy returned in earnest with The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, House of the Dragon, and Neil Gaiman's long-awaited The Sandman adaptation. Your waking world is shaped my dreams. Meanwhile, Weird reigned across platforms with The Boys, Peacemaker, and Moon Knight, while exciting mysteries came back to the forefront with Severance, Yellow Jackets, and The After Party. An embarrassment of riches almost feels like an understatement when you look at that list and consider both the contents and the amazing titles not highlighted. So what does the future hold? Do all of these shakeups mean that we'll see fewer exciting series from the major players in the SVOD space? I'm more Magic 8 than Crystal Ball, but I can tell you that the answer is largely dependent on viewers. 2023 will see limited changes on the consumer end, and future shakeups are dependent on viewer behavior. That's us. Party people! Everything from Chapix ousting from Disney to Netflix's mass layoffs are reactionary moves to investor panic, yes. But that panic is because in a world with endless competition, uh, affectionately dubbed as the streaming wars, companies have more reason than ever to keep their subscribers happy. So what does that mean? Well, it mostly means that there is so much to look forward to in the coming year. You've come this far, and you know what's out there. You're not gonna scare us. Scared him? Fantasy and horror can live on opposite sides of the genre spectrum. But if they have one thing in common, it's that they were the two genres that seemed to best fit together on this here list. I'll be honest, 2023's fantasy offerings aren't going to be the same treasure trove as 2022. We got spoiled, and we'll have to wait a little bit longer for those dragons and orcs to return into our lives. But that doesn't mean that there's not plenty coming out that we're just dying to see. The Witcher season three is right around the corner. Geralt, Yaskier, Yennefer, and Ciri will return in the coming year with plenty of new monsters to face and trials to overcome. It'll also be the last season featuring Henry Cavill before Geralt changes hands to Liam Hemsworth, who, yes, we should be giving a chance before making a fuss. Rude. Guys. Your harmonies were a little pitchy. The unconventional, curious, and still extremely exciting continuation to Good Omens will be coming our way in 2023 as well. Though season one was the perfect adaptation of Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett's incredible novel of the same name, season two will be all Gaiman and will take us into uncharted territory for Crowley and Aziraphale now that the series is extending beyond the source material. Heaven and hell against humanity. The horror train stops for no one, so get ready for the fourth and final season of M. Night Shyamalan's Servant. Expect the threads that connect horror and grief to be at the forefront of the series more than ever as the horror master brings his series to a close. We'll also be seeing Mike Flanagan's The Fall of the House of Usher sometime in the fall of 2023, which, with his new deal with Amazon, will likely be his last project with Netflix. Parting may be such sweet sorrow, but there's no sorrow sweeter than the marriage of Flanagan and Edgar Allan Poe short stories. Of course, we're all waiting with bated breath for the premiere of The Last of Us. The adaptation is a dream come true for many, with a stellar creative team matched only by its stacked cast. And we cannot wait to dive into Joel and Ellie's ill-fated world. Don't expect an immediate follow-up to AMC's impeccable interview with a vampire in 2023. It hasn't even been renewed yet. But the entertainment giant will be returning with Anne Rice's Mayfair Witches, which sits plenty high up on our most anticipated list. If it's anywhere near Interview with a Vampire's quality, we're in for a real treat. Keep your eyes peeled for Yellow Jacket season two as well. The spooky, twisty, possibly cannibalistic sensation returns in March. And yeah, both Mayfair Witches and Yellow Jackets air on classic cable, AMC and Showtime respectively. But. Both feature SVOD options immediately after airing for cord cutters, so we're counting them even if they aren't part of the larger streaming conversation. I think it'll be good to reconnect with some old friends. Who's been Catherine Hahn's Agatha Harkness returns in the wildly anticipated House of Harkness after her breakout role in the impeccable WandaVision. 
Expect plenty more witchy goodness as the series dives into Harkness's complicated history, allegiances, and rivalries with other members of Marvel's coven. Speaking of fan favorites, Loki, Sylvie, and the rest of the TVA will be back on our screens in 2023 with Loki Season 2. The studio has been close to the vest when it comes to what the second season will cover. Shocking for Marvel, I know. But no matter where the variants' journeys take us, we're sure there will be plenty of mischief. Okay. Okay. Loki Season 2 and House of Harkness will be joined by several other thrilling spin-offs, sequels, and continuations to the MCU. Secret Invasion will bring our beloved Skrulls back into our lives, Riri Williams will continue the journey she started in Black Panther Wakanda Forever in her own show, Ironheart, and Echo will return to her own title series as her feud with Kingpin only grows. Yes, you will see Daredevil. In case that all wasn't enough, there are several very exciting Marvel animation projects in the works, but we'll get to those in a moment. We've decoded the intel from the First Order spy, and it confirms the worst. Somehow Palpatine returned. Somehow Palpatine returned. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. There's so much to be excited for. Let's go. How could we not be thrilled by the return of the Mandalorian? After a brief side quest on the Book of Boba Fett, Mando, Grogu, and the whole brood will return to our screens on March 1st. We haven't seen any new footage since D23, but it's pretty clear that what it means to be a Mandalorian will remain the central question as Bo-Katan takes the throne of Mandalore while Din Djarin reckons with the fact that he is no longer considered a Mandalorian before the rest of his people. All right, kid. Hang on. Leslie Headland, the co-creator of the acclaimed Russian doll, is taking us to the final days of the High Republic with the Acolyte. The mystery thriller is set to follow a former Padawan and her Jedi Master as they investigate a series of crimes and, despite that quick synopsis, is set to be quite Sith-heavy in nature. And no most anticipated of 2023 lists would be complete without the inclusion of the long-awaited Ahsoka. The story of Anakin Skywalker's ill-fated former Padawan continues in live action as she furthers her quest to hunt down the nefarious Grand Admiral Thrawn. Surrender or face the consequences. We have a signal now for when I'm needed. Okay, it's not all about the Batman, but we're still mad excited to check out the Penguin when it hits HBO Max in 2023. One of the several planned spinoffs from Matt Reeves' The Batman, the series is set to focus on, you guessed it, the Penguin. You guys realize I'm still here, right? You gonna tie me? How the hell am I supposed to get out of here? Regardless of where we see this series go, we're just excited to spend more time in Reeves' Gotham, and given that James Gunn has promised a more unified DCEU in the coming years, we're very interested to see how this first foray into that combined universe may look given that Reeves' film was originally meant to be its own standalone story. That's the question, isn't it? Superheroing will continue until morale improves. Of course, there's never really much morale to spare in the boys' universe, so we're assuming the same will be the case with its high school spinoff, Gen V. The boys' level gore will meet with sky-high level hormones and the Hunger Games level challenges in the newest addition to Eric Kripke's universe, and the show will be run by none other than Michelle Fazakis and Tara Butters of Agent Carter fame. And yeah, Gen V is happening early enough in the year that you can probably expect the boys' season four to hit in 2023 as well. There's just been no solid confirmation as of yet. Let's not forget about the one true American hero either. Peacemaker and the rest of his former Argus team will return for season two. Like the boys, we're not 100% certain that it'll happen in 2023, but we assume we'll see Chris Smith and his band of vagabonds make a triumphant return before the year ends. Eat peace, mother. Oh, that's a new record. Usually takes us 10 minutes to get kicked out of a palace. We're always excited for an animated slate. And given how often the art form was maligned in 2022, we're thrilled at how exciting the 2023 offerings look across genres and studios. The Legend of Vox Machina is set to return early on in 2023, bringing the hilarious and rowdy Critical Role favorites back into our screens after their incredibly well-received first season. Uh -oh. Those episodes blew us away, so there's a lot of excitement bubbling around this territory. Speaking of, the Bad Batch Season 2 will be hitting Disney Plus nice and early in 2023. What do you need, Rex? Any chance I could use you for a mission? Our most anticipated animated title of the coming year may just be X-Men 97. Man, a continuation of X-Men the Animated Series didn't even seem possible just a year ago, and now there's one right around the corner. 
We don't have a premiere window just yet, but stay tuned for a release date. And then there's the Scooby-Doo spinoff that finally made Velma gay, something James Gunn tried to do all the way back in 2001. Velma will follow the brains of Mystery Inc. before those meddling kids even had a chance to form their ghost-busting group. All of the humans of the group will be represented, which is important because the series is pitched as a love quadrangle between the four of them, but don't expect to see Scooby-Doo. Rights issues will keep the pup that we all spent our childhoods with from joining the series. Thanks. There are so many incredible series set to head our way in 2023, but I won't dance around it. There is a lot that you're gonna have to wait for too. As mentioned, both House of the Dragon and The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power aren't coming our way until 2024, but they're not the only major players that we'll have to wait to see return. The Sandman managed to nab a renewal from Netflix after delivering strong numbers still countered by high production costs, but we're currently not even sure when the continuation will go into production, let alone release. Given the level of production that's required for the series, it's almost certain that we won't see it until 2024. There's also the likes of major players like Apple TV Plus's upcoming MonsterVerse series, tentatively titled Hourglass. Right now, all we know is that it focuses on Godzilla and the rest of the Titans, and will be set after the events of Godzilla vs. Kong. While the series reportedly went into production June 30th of 2022, it's a big show with big post-production needs. So while there's a tiny chance of a late 2023 release, probably safer to expect it in 2024. And those, friends and country people, are the streaming shows that we are most hyped for in 2023. What are your most anticipated series coming out in the new year? Don't forget to let us know in the comments. And for everything else, stick with IGN. It's been Agatha all along. And I killed Sparky too.